Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on the Urban Wine Club uh, webinar. Uh, you know, you told me not to identify it, but I am. Urban Wine Club, Greek Wine Club, we're doing this with somebody who actually, uh, he, he should be on both. And that's why we have him here, our very good friend. But before I introduce our special guest, I want to say hello to Foti, the resident wine and cocktail expert. Foti, how are you? Yeah, so Ari, um, I think I'll be doing better once we start sipping the cocktails. <laughs> but we're waiting for a storm up here. I'm sure you've got the storm already down in D.C. But uh, once again, welcome to our cocktail webinar series. Uh, this has been exciting for us as adding another, another di dimension and dynamic to what we do here. Um, and as Ari has mentioned, we want to welcome back, you know, not just once again, but uh, many yeah. times with us. Yeah. I want to say he's our resident cocktail uh, specialist, mixologist, uh, and good friend. Welcome to the program, Johnny Livanos, uh, the creator and founder of Stray Dog Wild Gin. Welcome, Johnny. Hi, guys. Thank How you, Foti. Thank you. I'm good. Good, guys. Thank you, Foti. Thank you, Aris, for having me back again. It's so good to be here, even though I'm in my room. So it's always it's my, <laughs> it's, I'm in my bedroom. I created a bar in my bedroom, for those of you who can't can't see that this is actually a TV stand, but we're gonna pretend that this is actually a beautiful bar because they know when we're locked in our homes because of snowstorms, COVID, we get creative. This has been like a whole experience to find new ways to bring the bar experience home. So that's what kind of what we're gonna do here today with you guys. That's, <laughs> that, that's the beauty of what you just mentioned. You know, uh, the fact that now we can pretty much entertain at home and get the instructions and the expertise from individuals and professionals like yourself will make everyone's experience at home a lot better. And you, so. you, 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 you look the part, you dress the part, you, you, you have everything lined up. <laughs> this is perfect. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I tried every time I, I do a cocktail or a wine seminar, I always wear this hat. So they make me feel like I'm that much closer to Greece, <laughs> even though I, we did get like a foot of snow this morning. Oh uh, so well, so did Greece. So I guess, you know, we could still pretend like we're in Greece, right? That's true. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> so, Johnny, um, why don't we start off and kick off and tell us uh, a little bit about Stray Dog Wild Gin and how it all started for you? Yeah, sure. So for those of you who haven't had the privilege, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> those of you who haven't tried, tried Stray Dog yet. So here it is. Uh, if you can see, it's kind of glaring. Uh, so Stray Dog Wild Gin is a product that, I created and launched last year in uh, February of 2020. After many years of research and recipe testing and experimenting, basically Stray Dog was a way for me to put all I love about Greek flavor and Greek uh, spirits culture together into a product that I could share with the world. So I grew up working in restaurants, Greek restaurants. My family is, you know, like most Greek people, you at least have some relationship to the, the restaurant industry <laughs> so I grew up working in Greek restaurants my whole life and uh, the last restaurant my family opened up was called Usia which is um, the Greek word for essence and flavor and it was on the west it's on the west side of Manhattan um, and I built the whole beverage program there one of my major focuses was Greek wine and Greek spirits I love to make cocktails with Greek flavor and it was a fun way to just give someone a taste of what uh, for me was a part of my childhood, a part of visiting Greece and summer vacations uh, and trying to find a way to, to like make it fun drinks with it. Uh, so I'll tell you the story actually, how we came up with the idea. In, to, in 2017, I was hiking in Greece. Uh, I was actually on a wine trip and we're in, we're in Crete and we're drinking Tsipro. So for those of you who don't know, Tsipro, it's basically like a Greek Pisco. Uh, they'd make it out of, out of wine, uh, Greek uh, grapes. They distill it. And we're hiking while drinking Tsipura. It was a great hike because, you know, <laughs> where else, where else in, the, in the world are you drinking uh, local spirits, like basically local moonshine while hiking through the woods? And um, all around us were wild herbs like sage and rosemary. So I kind of, and some wildflowers. So I picked the herbs and I put them in my glass of Tsipura. And then like, I guess forgot about it. An hour later, I go back and I sip it. And the infusion of all those local wild botanicals in the drink kind of made my head go like, whoa, light bulb moment. Uh, and I realized that there really isn't anybody making gin uh, in Greece. And it's a country rich with so many beautiful botanicals, so much, like so many delicious ingredients 
So I decided to find a way to make a gin that could incorporate those, those delicious flavors of, of the motherland. Um, and then, I, you know, I, I, we found a fantastic distillery in northern Greece that we work with. Uh, and they helped us produce this fantastic gin, Stray Dog Wild Gin. So we're using wild botanicals uh, like sage, wildly grown sage from the mountains of Greece, rosemary, bay leaves, cardamom, fennel seed, um, mastica. And then we use fresh lemon and orange peels. So that's basically the, the majority of, of the botanicals used in the gin. And for those of you who haven't tried it, I'll try and describe it to you. You have this beautiful, almost savory, herbal, full-bodied gin. And, you know, craft gin is, is such a fantastic uh, subcategory of gin. I, I, I love gin. I mean, gin is one of my favorite spirits. But the craft gin movement, you're having so many different gins out there that are, you know, using representing maybe a country or a region where they're being produced. Uh, and I felt like Greece deserved a product that was going to be able to showcase those flavors. Um, and that's our story. And uh, basically, yeah, what else? Oh, and we, we, we named it Stray Dog. Stray, the Stray Dog represents the wild side of Greece and the wild botanicals we use. And then we also give a portion of our profits to help benefit a Stray Dog shelter in Greece as well. Bravo. Uh, so that's that's the stray dog story. I hopefully you all get to try it soon. Order it on uh, Urban Wine Club or GreekWineClub.com. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that plug. But honestly, I'm gonna say before we even talk a uh, uh, taste, I, one of my favorite things ever with a spirit, one of my favorite experiences ever with a spirit was on uh, pulling out the cork of a stray dog gin bottle for the first time and taking a deep uh, whiff of that aroma it truly mm. is like a, 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 an amazing aroma like it Thank stuck you. out to me and I, I appreciate it well yeah from greeks to greeks it's like we <laughs> it does something you could you could recognize in here right like you know whether it's the tea my yaya used to make at night or you know the rosemary smell when you're cooking you know braised lamb like we're we're so we're full of herbs right like greeks always cook with herbs like we have herbs and everything uh so for the, for greeks it has a familiar thing and for non-Greeks, it has something that you want and crave. It's just mm -hmm. like really enticing aroma. Uh, the botanical mixture is just, it's, I find it to be delicious. I love making drinks with it too, but I, I know I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> you should yeah, be. But, but sometimes, yeah. you know, the bias, it comes from a true place. And, you know, again, I, maybe I'm biased as well, but it, 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 for, it, for the, all the gins that I've had in my life, and I used to drink, I, I had a couple of years where my drink was gin and tonic and mm -hmm. like, Stray Dog is absolutely the best, one of the best gins I've ever had. Thank you. Yeah, we, I mean, we, Stray Dog is fantastic with the gin and tonic. Uh, I love using it in simple cocktails because the gin is extremely complex. So when you're serving it with the gin and tonic, you, it really allows you to capture all those aromas, all those flavors. Um, but actually today, we're not making gin and tonics, but we are making three very simple classics. And I think the classics are the best way to enjoy the flavors of Stray Dog. Um, because you're not masking the flavors of the gin, you're almost just you're enhancing them or you're highlighting them with you know with either some syrups or juices. Um, so yeah, awesome. So so Johnny, I uh, just so the audience knows um, everything you see Johnny do, we're gonna have these recipes on the video and podcast page. So if if you miss something or you forget something, uh, you could you could definitely find them uh, on the on the links. Okay. Cool. And uh, just so everyone knows, for these three cocktails we're making. So today we're going to be making three drinks. Uh, we're going to be making a, a Greek mule, right? So basically, uh, uh, I got a, it. I just, we just called the donkey, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like a Moscow mule <clears throat> variation using gin. Uh, we'll be making a, I call it, call it the wild bee, uh, basically a bee's knees with stray dog. And then we'll be finishing off with, I like to call it the mountain gimlet. Basically, again, a classic gimlet using stray dog. And we're going to be using, for all these drinks, we're using these fantastic bar mixers called Cheeky. There's a whole line of these Cheeky products. Um, they're shelf-stable syrups and juices that you can also uh, find on their store. Um, and then there's also a, a, a cocktail kit available for purchase that has basically all the ingredients here to, you see. That you, so you can make these drinks at home. Uh, simple syrup, lemon juice, lime juice. We have a ginger syrup as well, and then a honey syrup. 
So all very simple staples to kind of making a, a, a great cocktail at home. And I love them that they're shelf stable because, you know, when you're cooking, making cocktails at home, you, you don't want to have to use everything all at once. It's nice to be able to kind of have that ease and simplicity of, you know, just going into your fridge, grabbing some juice, grabbing the syrup and making a drink without having to go grocery shopping. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, we were talking earlier, like when I'm at home making drinks, I'm a lazy bartender. Like, I like to go, <laughs> when I go out, I want to like have someone make me the craziest cocktail. When I'm at home, I just want to be able to like shake something real quick and, and sit down on my couch and go back to doing what I was doing. Yeah. Um, but should we get started? Absolutely. All right. All right. So the first drink we're going to make here today is basically a mule variation using gin. People call it the gin gin mule. All right. So we're going to have to make this drink. We're going to need a cocktail shaker. We're going to be using the straight dog gin, of course, and some lemon, uh, sorry, lime juice and the uh, ginger syrup. All right. So most mule very most mules at home will use ginger beer. Ginger beer is a great, a great ingredient when you're making a mule. Uh, ginger syrup is a very fun alternative. I find that if you love that ginger flavor, um, this is a great way to kind of, you could enhance it, use extra ginger, less ginger if you'd like. Uh, so a great, a great uh, ingredient to use. So we're gonna start off with three quarters of an ounce of ginger syrup. You could go ahead and pour that right into the cocktail shaker. If you are, since we're not using ginger beer, we're gonna finish this drink with club soda or sparkling water. That's gonna give it the bubbles. All right, now we're gonna use three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. I'm gonna give us a quick little shake to make sure I get all the sediment and pulp mixed in. So when we're making cocktails, it's all about balance, balancing sweetness, acidity, and the booze. Mm -hmm. Balance is key. So, um, all right. Yeah. John, you notice, I'm noticing that you're, you're adding the, um, the juices and the syrups first before the actual spirit. Is there a reason? Yeah. For that? That's just a kind of like a bartender rule of thumb. It's like if you put the spirit first and then you mess up, you have to kind of start over and you waste the spirit. So this is more oh, okay. expensive, right? So by using the juices first, if I messed up, I could just start over and I'm not going to cry too much about it. You, know, you don't cry over spilt lemon juice, but if you, you could cry over <laughs> spilt gin. Uh, I approve of it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to pour two ounces of, of gin into our shaker. Usually when I'm doing these cocktail classes, I'm at the restaurant bar using their space and using their ice machine. But today I have to be like a regular person and have to use, I have to use ice from the freezer. So let's see, it's, I think this ice should be good. So we're gonna fill up our cocktail shaker all the way with ice. And we're gonna give it a shake. So shaking is a very important part of making a cocktail. Shaking helps cool the drink down, right? We're gonna make it nice and ice cold. And it also it gives dilution to the drink because you know drinking hard spirits with lemon juice, it's gonna make it pretty tart and strong. Mm -hmm. By shaking with ice, you're adding some water, which dilutes the cocktail, but it makes it more palatable and it helps add to the enjoyment of the drink. And it also mixes everything together and aerates the drink. So it gives it a texture as well. So make sure your, your shaker is nice and tight so it doesn't spill everywhere. And then we'll do a little shake. <laughs> we, th this is going to be a new meme right here. The boomerang of me just like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So I, I shake for about like 10 to 15, 10 seconds or until your hand starts to get cold. That's kind of when you know it's done. And now we're just going to go ahead and pour this right into our, our copper cup. Oh, I, love, I love to do this. This is a briki. So for all the Greeks <laughs> out there, a briki is basically the thing you use to make Greek coffee, Turkish coffee, Armenian coffee, classic coffee with the sediment on the bottom but this is such a fun drinking vessel to use this as a um a, a, a cup instead of using a, a moscow mule cup grab the briki from your grandma's closet and uh johnny and i just a... uh somebody just uh uh commented nice shaking action so i just oh, perfect you know. thank you thank you <laughs> um 
Yeah, I've worked on my shake for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're going to fill up your cup with ice. Boom, boom, boom. Now you're going to top it off with, with some sparkling water. Oh. So it's going to give it the nice bubbliness to it. If you didn't have ginger syrup at home or don't want to make it, you can just use ginger beer. So you could use the same recipe. Basically, there's gin, simple syrup, and lime juice, and then top it off with ginger beer. Mm. All right. So now I'm going to cut, have a little a lime here. I'm going to get some garnishes ready for us. I'm going to cut a little wheel of lime, a little lime wheel. I'm going to put that on the top. And then some fresh mint goes a long way to brighten up the drink, kind of enhances those herbal flavors mm. of the gin, makes it nice and refreshing. Boom. So you I like this, when you have fresh mint, you kind of want to slap it against your hand and it brings out all those fantastic aromas. And basically, there you go. Oh, I love it inside the bariki. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Mm. So no ginger beer, but the replacement of that ginger syrup really does justice. I think so, because ginger syrup is basically freshly squeezed ginger juice yep. and sugar and water. So three ingredients to make a ginger syrup. But it's the pure juice of the ginger. So while ginger beer also, well, if you're getting a good quality ginger beer, it's going to be have some ginger juice in there, but it's mostly like the flavor of the ginger. Ginger juice itself is potent. It gives it texture. It gives it body. I mean, you, it feels like it's fresh ginger. Like I feel like I literally juiced a ginger or cut fresh ginger. I, that, that's what it smells like to me in my cup. It just tastes more, it tastes more real. It, it feels like I'm really like have ginger in my glass. Any questions about this cocktail before we jump into the next one? What do you think? Uh, do you, uh, Johnny, do you want me to give you questions as they come or do you want to save them for the end? No, as they come is good. Maybe between each drink or as we go. Well, it gives, I, some, it gives a... me some time to drink a cocktail. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to throw this away. Get the red X one started. <laughs> well, we had we had one that came in a little while ago. Um, uh, can Stray Dog Wild Gin be considered organic? Um, it's it's not necessarily organic. I mean, we use some organic botanicals, um, but not every single one of them is. Uh, so because of that, we, we can't say, but, uh, it does, it does good have, question. Yeah. It has a lot of, uh, a lot of those herbs and spices that you could consider. Um, but it's also, did, didn't you guys, uh, I think it was on a previous one where you said, you know, a lot of times, uh, some of these, uh, producers, they do like organic things, but sometimes it's just not worth getting, paying the, the yeah. Food. Yeah. So we talked about it with wine. So basically, you know, in Greece, for example, we're talking about Greek wine. The same would apply to a lot of the small like foragers yeah. who, are, who are picking herbs. Like to get to be labeled organic, you have to like pay, you know, some tens of thousands of dollars to get to get like that certification. And if you're a small producer, it doesn't always make sense to do that because. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're not you're not making that much to make it make to make up for that. So, right, right. Yeah. Um, well, another question uh, just came in. Uh, can you. Can you use just some grated ginger as opposed to ginger syrup? Mm. Um, so you're like I said earlier, you need balance in a cocktail. So you could take ginger and muddle it, but then you're going to need sugar at some point. So if you did that, um, mm. you would have to then use a simple syrup as well. Um, so if you're going to go through the trouble, you might as well make a simple syrup and like throw ginger into it, you know, because... <laughs> Well, from from my question on top of that one is it it I feel like it would just complicate things to use real ginger, even though that might be actually really good if you could do it very well, like appropriately. Yeah, I mean there there are a lot of cocktails that have um, muddled ginger in them, um, like the penicillin, for example, is a great whiskey cocktail with muddled ginger. Um, but the trick, the trick, trouble with ginger is like it is when you're shaking with it, like little pieces get in there and it gets in your teeth. And then mm -hmm. it's not as pleasant as something like a ginger syrup where it's like a pure, clean ginger flavor without the pieces of the of the ginger in there, uh, a little more subtle. Um, right. Yeah, that's just my opinion. But 
you, you take a ginger syrup at home, you can literally take the grated ginger, take a cup of sugar, a cup of water and boil it for a few minutes until the sugar dissolves. And then you get that ginger flavor in there. So you can make it at home just like that. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that was it for that question. Um, so All right. take your sip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Ready for a number drink number two? Absolutely. All right. So the next drink we'll be making is basically a play on the bee's knees. So the bee's knees is one of my favorite classic cocktails that I find goes fantastic with, uh, with stray dog gin. Um, so the bee's knees is one of those pre like prohibition era drinks yeah. when, um, people had to hide their booze, <laughs> uh, hide the, the scent of booze from the, from the, from the fuzz. So they would basically like use, <laughs> you know, before that people weren't mixing too many drinks, right? It was kind of, you were just drinking straight spirits or martinis, stronger cocktails, you know, mixing with honey and, and, uh, and lemon wasn't so common, but honey and lemon was a great way to kind of hide the aromas of the gin in case your, your speakeasy got busted. So uh, that's kind of how the story goes, how the drink got started. But for me, it's one of those simple drinks that I find is so perfect because you're using honey. Honey is also a thing that's very common in Greek uh, flavor, Greek astronomy. So the honey with lemon juice and gin, just three simple ingredients, but it, it is so, I just love the way they work together. Uh, Greek herbs with the honey. It almost reminds me of drinking tea. So this is kind of one of those one of those cocktails that you get these fantastic marriage of flavors. Uh, and it's for me is one of the best represent best classic drinks for using stray dog. Um, so for this cocktail, we're gonna we're gonna shake this drink. We're gonna serve it in a um, let's use this. We're gonna use a yeah. We'll we'll use this glass. We'll use a, a martini glass. This is called a Nick and Nora glass. Um, we're going to use honey syrup. All right. So I have my honey, che cheeky honey syrup, and then we are going to use lemon juice. Where is my lemon juice? Oh, here. My cheeky lemon juice. Okay. And of course you could use fresh lemon juice as well. If you'd like, um, I'm just testing out these products and then they're, they're fantastic. So I'm having fun using them. <laughs> All right. So where do I start? We're going to start with our honey syrup. Honey syrup is basically just honey with a little bit of water. It's something you could easily make at home. Um, basically, the reason why you're not just using pure honey is honey is extremely thick. Yeah. And it's really hard to make a cocktail with thick honey. It won't dissolve in your cocktail. It will just kind of get all over the place, make a mess, and then it won't really do anything in your drink. So honey syrup, to make it at home, you could take uh, two parts Greek honey, preferably, to one part... Uh, uh, water, just dissolve it so that it's um, a little bit looser, right? Yeah. Then we're going to take one ounce of lemon juice. I'll go ahead and pour that into our cocktail shaker. Question if uh, you want to take one. Yeah. Uh, why did you choose that particular glass for this cocktail? Does it play a role in the cocktail? So, um, the bee's knees is traditionally, it's classic to serve it in a martini or a coupe glass. Um, I have just two martini glasses here to choose from. And I thought this would be better for the gimlet that we're making next. There's not a really a big reason why. I just love this glass. I think it's cute. Yeah, it's and I'm really gonna cool. garnish it. I'm gonna garnish it with a nice little lemon twist at the end. And I love the way it looks when you have it sticking out the edge of the glass. Um, plus it allows you to really get your nose and smell all the beautiful flavors and aromas. So. Um, these are fun cocktail glasses. I, I love them. They're kind of, they're small and petite, but they're just like fun to sip on. Awesome. Thank you. Not every, not every uh, thing has like a technical reason. A lot of it's just because, hey, it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> That's why all I right, so now, always uh, fought the all the time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to put two ounces of gin in here. And the, the, what I love about these drinks, they, it's a simple formula you can use to make a lot of different cocktails. An ounce of juice, or not, sorry, an ounce of citrus, two ounces of, of booze, and then um, three quarters of an ounce of like a sweetener is, a, is like a very classic ratio for like making daiquiris, cosmos, margaritas. So it's something to keep in mind. It's a very you know fun, easy ratio to remember 
uh, two, one, three quarters. And you can make a lot of different types of drinks with that. All right, so we're gonna fill up our shaker with ice. We're gonna get ready to shake. I got a big ice cube. All right. Oh, so again, man. we're gonna shake. When I'm shaking, I want to like get my whole body into it. <laughs> you know, you don't want to look. You don't want to do this and look kind of like unenthusiastic. You want to shake it hard. <laughs> the harder you shake it, the more like aeration you're gonna get. You're gonna have this beautiful foam on the top. It's gonna make your drink look prettier. And you know, if you have if you have people at your bar or people at home watching you, it's like this is how you do it. This is how you you get everyone excited. Like, you know, you're gonna get all everyone's gonna start watching. You're like, ooh, he knows how to bartend. So you know, hold it tight. I, yeah. I used to call I used to call you the Ryan Reynolds of the Greek world, but now I'm gonna call you the Tom Cruise and cocktail of the Greek world. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I'm one of those handsome guys, I'm okay <laughs> in your world. <laughs> all right, and now I'm gonna shake. There you go. All right. So I shook this one a little bit longer than the last drink. Yeah, I was going to say, I, no I noticed a, a longer shake on this one. So, yeah, the previous cocktail, we topped it off with soda water, right? So any kind of drink that is being topped off with soda, uh, tonic, anything like that, you don't need to shake it as long because you're going to top it off with more water and you're going to basically dilute it a little bit more. This drink is going right into a coupe glass. We're not going to add anything else to it. So shake it, you can shake it a little bit longer to get that really nice texture and Ooh. aeration. Oh, look at that. That looks really good. So I'm going to go, I have a lemon here. I'm going to just pour, not get a nice lemon twist on top of this drink. So when I'm twisting my lemons, it's my little trick at home. I always take a nice veggie peeler, make sure it's sharp. And I don't pull with the peeler, right? This is my most important tip. This is actually the most dangerous tool in a bar. You're gonna, <laughs> I rip, I cut off my pinky finger with this thing once. Oh, you wanna move the lemon, not the peeler. So I'm gonna basically lock it in place. And I'm gonna twist the lemon, pulling it back. Moving the lemon. I mean, yeah, see? Moving the lemon, not the peeler. Boom. Give it a little thing. You had me worried there for a second. Yeah, no, this was a, this was a, <laughs> I, have to, I have to get this sharpened. <laughs> <laughs> Next, you're going to take the twist. And this is a, a, another great tip for bartending at home. With the skin, the, the, you know, the outside part of the skin facing the drink, give it a little squeeze. And all the essential oils that are in the peel are going to pop right out and fall on top of the glass. That was cool Go because and... we totally saw all of it like spray out into the... Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And out, right oh, cool. into the glass. And I want to, I'm going to come up to the camera so you can see by shaking it that nice, you had this beautiful um, little glare here. You can see the nice little foam that kind of forms on the top. Oh, yeah. So when you, when you shake it nice and long, uh, and if you're using a, like a syrup like we did, it, gonna, it creates this beautiful foam. I love that. I just love that texture. That looks mm. really, really good. Like mm. seriously good. That is really good. Yeah. Hmm. I love the bee's knees. I mean, honey with the flavors of stray dog, it's such a great combination. Mm. Um, somebody asked, can you just recap the ingredients one more time? Yeah. So basically we're calling this the wild bee because we're using wild gin, uh, but it's simply a riff on the bee's knees. It literally it is the bee's knees cocktail. Two ounces of gin, one ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup. Um, and then to make your honey syrup at home, well, first of all, just buy, buy this stuff. It's, it's easier. <laughs> uh, you can get the cheeky, the cheeky honey syrup, which is easier to use. Or you could take a little bit of honey and just, you know, two parts honey to one part warm water and dissolve it so that it's, it's a little bit looser and not super thick. Okay, so uh, you, you actually just answered another question, which I, 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 I'm not sure where the question came up because you, you kind of addressed this, but they asked warm water or cold water to dissolve the honey. Yeah, so. definitely warm water. Uh, if you use cold water, it's not going to work. Um, warm water, and then you want to cool it down for a few minutes before you make your drink or make the syrup ahead of time. And, you know, honey is, has natural preservative qualities to it. So a honey syrup, you know, it could last a little while in the fridge at least probably a week a week or two i would say maybe not more than that because you know 
but yeah, honey syrup, very simple to make. Um, yeah. Awesome. That drink just looks really good. I, I want one right now. <laughs> Othi, get a, get a express shipment to me, please. I'm overnighting it right now. <laughs> yeah, again, I really I love this drink. It's just so simple. It's so easy to easy to make at home. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put this aside so I could give it to my family. They're all waiting for me to come down for dinner. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> guys, I'm, I'm making cocktails for you all. Calm down. That's awesome. <laughs> if I don't so drink giant, it all first. So do you do you get stuck being the bartender when you're having family gatherings? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> but you know what i do now i i like people always ask me to make drinks i just i i can't do it anymore so <laughs> i i just um i make batches of drinks i make like a punch bowl or i'll take like a picture a pitcher or like a wine decanter and i'll just throw everything in there and i'll make like seven or eight drinks in one time and and have everyone serve themselves. <laughs> like I said, I'm a lazy bartender. I've, I've, over time, it's like, make your own goddamn drink. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that excitement is not always going to be there when you're making drinks. For well, everybody. the problem is I'm also like cooking half the time when everyone's getting together. It's like, I can only be in so many places at once, guys. Come on. Johnny, you, you got you to gotta come hang out with us, man. We need drinks and food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm waiting for the summer. We're going to have like a pool party in my house, I think. You guys come over. Awesome. We'll do something. We'll do something. We'll have you over. We'll make some. We'll have a barbecue. Oh, we'll dude, hang man. out outside. Can we live stream this, or is that is that? Yeah, let's not do cool. it. <laughs> uh, there was well, a, we could, we could have a camera in the background or something, right? Greek uh, Easter. That's what it's going to be. We'll do it for Greek Easter if the weather's permitting. We have the lamb on the spit. I'll make bees knees punch bowls for you, I'll just oh. just for you, Ari. You have your own. I own think bowl. I think you're going <laughs> to regret those words, man. And you're like, are you still here three days later? Um, so another another comment, not a question, but um, they said they have honey syrup from Greece. Can't wait to use it to make this cocktail. Oh, wow. cool. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, look, Greek honey is the best way to make this drink. I, I'm not going to lie. You know, there, there's so many different types of honey that grow, that are made from bees with getting their pollen from wildflowers. Um, and Greek honey is some of the best honey in the world. I mean, Greeks say everything that they do is the best <laughs> in the world, but I really believe that Greek honey is something that is extremely special. They have so much like, medicinal qualities to it uh, and the flavor of, of the Greek honey with just fresh citrus and straight dog gin. It's just such a beautiful medley. Uh, it's yeah. such a simple thing too. It's so simple. That's why I love you. We're making simple cocktails. Like Greek food is actually pretty simple. Like half of it's just lemon juice and garlic on top of whatever you're eating. Right. Uh, why not put the same approach towards cocktails? If you're using good quality ingredients, you could keep it simple and it's going to be fantastic. And that's what we're using. We're using fresh juices, fresh syrups, and gin. It's like, can't go wrong. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, you guys want to move on to the third? The final, the final, the final cocktail. It's the final cocktail. <laughs> All right. So uh, the last drink we're making is, uh, we're going to make a gimlet. A Ooh. gimlet is, again, another classic, simple drink that everyone should learn how to make. Uh, so the story goes that this drink was basically popularized by the British sailors in the 19th century. Um, they, were, they were getting the scurvy. They had, they had vitamin C deficiencies. And they once basically they got limes or citrus on board, they would all go crazy and drink it because it was like to them, it was like the medicine they needed. Yeah. Uh, vitamin C and lime juice helps prevent scurvy. So by drinking this cocktail, you are helping yourself not get scurvy. So good for you. Okay. Um, and of course, British sailors, they love gin. That's what they do. They drink gin then they have fruit citrus. They put it together. Boom. It's like and what, one like little one little fun British fact. sailor medicine. One little fun <laughs> fact, Johnny. Have you ever huh? heard the term? Have you ever heard the term limey when they call old British sailors limeys? Uh, no, I did not hear. I did not know that term. So there was, there's a term where they used to call them limeys. And the reason was they used to suck on limes to try to prevent scurvy. So I just want to throw that in there. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we don't have to suck on a lime today. We're going to just suck on a cocktail. <laughs> Way more enjoyable. I think so. Uh, All right. So again, really simple. We're going to use one ounce of lime juice to start this off. 
Then we're going to use three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. All right. So we have, this is the third syrup of the day. Three cocktails, three syrups. Simple syrup. It's so simple. They call it simple syrup. You're literally just taking a cup of water and a cup of sugar. Equal parts, sugar to water. Hot water to dissolve the sugar. Um, and you, that, you could use that for your coffee. If you drink iced coffee, it's preferred because sugar doesn't melt in cold coffee. Um, for cocktails, it's, it's one of the most important basic ingredients. You know, when you're shaking a cold drink, sugar won't dissolve. So simple syrup is basically a way for you to add sweetness to the drink without adding too much flavor and with uh, having it dissolve properly. Uh, so again, simple syrup, you know, you need to, you, there's so many cocktail recipes that require simple syrup. Uh, so something you could make at home, pre-buy it. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that's so easy to make. You might as well just make it yourself. It's literally just sugar and water. All right. And now we're going to put in two ounces of gin. What I love about this recipe, you could, this is like also the recipe for a daiquiri. Basically, if you swap out gin for rum, keep everything else the same, it's a daiquiri. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And he doesn't mean that he's not referring to the frozen daiquiri, Ari. <laughs> I'm, I'm referring to strawberry daiquiris on the beach. No, this know. is a, when you're making like a classic daiquiri, shaken just with good rum, lime juice, and simple syrup, that's, that's it. It's just two ounces of spirit, one ounce of lime juice, three quarters uh, ounce of simple syrup. That's like my golden ratio. You know, that's the best way to just make a good balance drink. Let's go ahead and add our ice to our shaker. When I'm shaking a cocktail and filling it up with ice, I kind of want to fill it up to the top with ice. The reason I do that is to ensure you're getting a properly cooled and diluted and aerated drink. Also, if you're in the behind a bar, bartenders should always fill it up to the top. That way it's like they know they're using the same amount of ice for every drink. It just helps keeping it consistent so that one customer or another one doesn't get different different drinks. Yeah. Or if you're coming back for a cocktail, you know, you're going to get the same, uh, the same flavor. So again, we're going to do our shaky time. shaky time. Make sure it's nice and tight and shake away. <laughs> That's how it is. My favorite part. <laughs> Voila. When your hand starts to feel numb, that's when you know it's you're done. <laughs> cool. So I'm using uh this other martini glass I have in my house. These are like that one's really cool. I, I asked my parents about this and they they like they got this at their wedding as a wedding present. They still have it. So it's like a vintage martini glass. Oh that's wow. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I only drink into out of vintage martini glasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go ahead and strain this out into our glass. You know, the classic daiquiris are served up and not on the rocks or not frozen, but no shame if that's how you want to have it. Um, I like it like this because it's, it, you know, it, it doesn't get, it doesn't continue to get watered down, you know, if you have ice in there, you don't have to drink it kind of fast. It's a little bit more enjoyable. You could sip it. Um, and then I'm going to top it off with a, with a lime wheel. So take your lime and you can cut a little, cut a little circle, little wheel of the lime. Mm. Uh, I, that's really just to make it look pretty. But also when you have like that fresh lime on the top of the drink, it brings this next dimension. Like there's something of fresh limes that has a, such a fun flavor. I love, I love that way. It just makes the drink smell better. gives it a little more refreshing refreshing uh aspect to it and there you go see i shook it hard you have this nice beautiful foam on top okay, i'm going to show the camera i'm going to turn my light off to get that glare away beep so you can see that, that nice oh, little yeah, foam yeah. the lime floating on there i'm going to go ahead since i'm here I might as well <laughs> mm. good <sighs> oh wow, that's really good yeah looks so mm. good Mm -hmm. your family's lucky i'm gonna say that they're getting some good drinks right now <laughs> so what I love about this drink you know the simple syrup has very little flavor it's basically flavorless it's just sweetness it doesn't have a taste besides a taste of sugar which tastes sugar it doesn't really have a flavor it just has sweetness you know so this is a, a, such a simple drink you really get to taste all the herbs that are in the gin 
that lime juice just brightens it up. It wakes everything up. It wakes up your taste buds. It makes it the drink refreshing. But then you have all those beautiful aromas really come alive and shine. So definitely a fun drink. Another, another easy to make cocktail. Three ingredients that, you know, you could have lying around. Nothing too fancy here. Um, and that was the goal of this class to basically show you that cocktail making at home can be simple. It's easy. It's fun. I literally had no prep here at all besides setting up this bar in my TV stand. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes if I'm making drinks, it takes a lot of prep. This, we have these, these awesome mixers that are ready to go. I just shook it and put ice and done. I, I you know, we, we had, we had a lot of fun today making them, but it's so simple. And I just think that is important message to get across is that bar staying at home should be fun and easy. Uh, so don't overthink it, get out there, get some of these ingredients and try making them at home. Well, well, the beauty, that, that's of, my, that's my service call of the day. The, the <laughs> beauty of what you did is uh, two of like very, very of my favorite cocktails, the mule and the, the bees is, is what you displayed here. I haven't had the gimmel and I really want to try it, but I, I'm familiar with the mule and the, the bees and so simple, so nice. Yeah. Perfect. And we Thank got, you. I'm, I'm glad that, um, that you got the, uh, not to cut you off, Ari, but I'm glad that you brought into the scenario, the Gimlet, because the Gimlet's been an all time classic for years. Oh yeah. And it, it started to pop up again, uh, in lots of great cocktail, uh, bar menus. So that's pretty cool that you brought that. I think here. a Gimlet is a fun way to, to try gin, you know, gin, you, everyone's drinking Negronis, gin and tonics, martinis. Those are such popular drinks that I feel like you hear all the time. But the Gimlet's a classic, and it's one of the few classic gin drinks that are shaken with let, with lime juice and sit, you know citrus and, and simple syrup. It's like one of the few gin drinks that I feel like you could have, you know, on a tropical beach. You know, it's like it's just so perfectly simple and delicious, um, but it allows you to really appreciate the flavors of the gin. Uh, that's something I think that's great about the Gimlet. Um, definitely recommend ordering them when you're out to a bar or a restaurant. Okay. trying it with whatever favorite gin you might have and you know you can mix it up try it with different types of gins you'll see how how every gin is unique and special in their own way cool. i'm going straight dog the whole way baby yeah you could do that too <laughs> <laughs> uh a comment uh love these recipes good simple natural ingredients very greek thank you so yeah awesome. it's it's that's that's what it is um what uh one more question just popped up what is the proof of stray dog so it's 43.5 percent alcohol wow. so 87 proof 87 okay yeah which is i think a lot uh easier than some of the other um mainstream gins that are in the 90s out there right like i think Tangare yeah like beef beef feeder and tangare are about like 90 proof yeah. uh so it's a little bit less than that we're still you know, above 40% alcohol, which is kind of like the standard. Uh, so it has some, you know, has some body to it, but it's such a smooth gin that even with that extra, you know, few points of, of, of alcohol, it's, it's still pretty soft and well-rounded. Right. And uh, if I can make a comment for our guests that are joining us, thank you so much for joining. For those of that did not get a chance to order the uh, cocktail kit, we do have the Stray Dog cocktail kit on our platforms for order. That includes all those wonderful syrups and juices that uh, that um, Johnny has from Cheeky. You get them bundled up in one package, and each uh, bottle is four ounces, and they're good to make up to five cocktails, if I'm not mistaken. Per oh, yeah, per yeah, bottle, right? yeah. I mean, I barely did a dent on these things, so that's I awesome. I think they're four ounces of lemon juice. That's four cocktails. The syrups will probably get a little more life out of them. They're also four ounces, so you'll probably get yeah about five or six cocktails. So with one bottle of gin, you have a you have a party. Yeah, right. man. <laughs> and uh, you can also order additional <laughs> bottles too, as well of the cheeky products on our platform. So yeah, we just wanted to point that out that for those that didn't get the cocktail kit, we highly encourage that you do so, so that you can actually replicate this wonderful demonstration that Johnny provided us this evening. Yes, and it's definitely worth it. Um, like I said, if nothing else, you do sniff this gin it's so it <laughs> smells so good i'm telling you right now it, it smells grease <laughs> it, it's so it's so refreshing i love the smell um but yeah I, I gotta try i gotta try all these because like i said mule and and the bees is is i've always loved those uh i i'm 
I don't know. Like, I'm sure I've had a gimlet. I just don't know if I know the name of it. So yeah, like, I mean, you might not have had it though. It's it's something that like when I used to bartend, like I would sometimes get a Gibson, and in my head I'd be like, wait, is that a gimlet or a Gibson? I would forget which one I have to make. A gib a gib a Gibson is basically a martini with uh, onions, uh, and then the gimlet is the gin with lime and simple. And what I was, uh, always, I was always confused as a bartender. Like, what are they? Wait, and, that's and the one uh, with the onions or the one with the lime? <laughs> and when, when Johnny sa says onions, for those of that are kind of thrown off, he's referring <laughs> to the pearl onions that yeah. <laughs> um, are circular that are that are in, um, they went to cocktails. <laughs> have you ever had one before, Ari? No, I actually have not, to be honest. I love, uh, you know, I feel maybe I have. It was yeah, one of there's this one bar I love in New York. Uh, if you order a martini, they give you the they give you everything. You get an onion, you get an olive, and you get the lemon twist. So it's what? like you could have every sip. You could have a little bit of something oh, different. So it's like cool. the martini trio. That's awesome. I love that. fun. I, I don't I don't always drink martinis. Like martinis is like you have to be in a mood for a martini. Like, you know those things are strong. Oh, yeah. uh, so <laughs> I stick to the I stick to the shake it and fun the fun uh sweet and sour drinks but um you know, every once in a while you need a good martini to kind of well that, that's why that's, out of you. <laughs> that's why i couldn't answer the question because it, I, I can't remember if i had one because i probably blacked out or something yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is often right ari <laughs> used to be yeah. yeah yeah why is there onions in my drink <laughs> you wake up there's a big red onion on there now johnny <laughs> um and, and I, maybe we didn't mention this in the beginning but um uh, we can discuss quickly to our guests and our audience that for every purchase of Stray Dog, um, you do something pretty, um, pretty, uh, ad, ad, you know, really admirable for uh, the fact that Stray Dog is referring to. Yeah, so we have Stray Dogs in Greece that are w w roaming the communities, roaming the towns, and and we give back a portion of our of our proceeds to uh, Stray Dog shelters in Greece. Our official partner is actually called Save a Greek Stray. You can go to savagreekstray.gr and to learn a little bit more about them. Um, they have an amazing facility where they help house stray dogs, and they really their whole mission is to focus on adoption uh, and to you know find permanent homes for the dogs that kind of run the streets of Greece. So uh, definitely a, a great charity. We were happy to partner with, um, and hopefully you know as we continue to grow, we'll continue to do more things to help you know the stray animals in Greece and and, and beyond. And that's, that's super, like, that's an amazing thing you guys are doing because honestly, like growing up, going to Greece all throughout my childhood, all I can remember is feeling so like horrible about seeing these like dogs, like roaming around the streets and they look hungry and this, and I always remember being like all sad and upset about it. And it, it's so cool that now I feel like there's kind of like a movement of like people trying to to kind of change that and you know yeah you... i mean look there's actually a lot there's a lot of, of of like nonprofits that are helping the stray dogs of greece um if you have if you have a chance i don't have i believe it's I, I, go to takis shelter look yeah. at look look at up yep. he's this guy from crete and he he like took over i watched this video it's on youtube as if someone did a documentary on him but it feels like he took over like a garbage dump but basically converted it into this amazing place where he lives with like 300 dogs and he himself takes care of them. That's like his whole life. And, um, you know, he basically just survives off of donations from, and from volunteers, but that's another great, a great, uh, well, uh, we'll person we'll, out there. We'll tell you a, a funny story about what you just mentioned. We, uh, we, we spoke to a representative of Taki and then we actually spoke to Taki over, uh, social media Oh, wow. And we wanted to have him on our podcast. And the reason we couldn't is because of the time difference and anything that was within a reasonable time for us. He's like taking care of dogs. And he's like, I absolutely have to do this. Like, there's no I can't not do this. So, like, I, you know, I can't make that time work. And I was like, you know what? For somebody who can't make a time work, I've never like respected somebody <laughs> more. It's like this yeah. guy's so serious about it. So it, it was really cool. Well, you know, it, the thing is, like, someone's got to do it, you know, and, and for a lot of these animals, it's like no one has given any, you know, yeah, given and, any a damn about them and uh, just letting them kind of do their thing. And it, it, it's, you know, 
we're just happy to be, that there's people out there doing the work and we're, you know, you're one of them. And you're we're, one of them. we're proud, but we're proud that we could help, help them do their work and help them, you know, live that mission. Cause that's our mission too. And uh, it's something that we're proud of. And it's, it's been something we, we started off since we had the idea for the brand um, and something we're really proud of. And it's very, very commendable. So we appreciate that of you. And thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, Anything else? Uh, Forty. He got three drinks ready for his family. Yes. <laughs> I think I, I, we'll see. We'll see about that. They're already almost done. Maybe, well, maybe, yeah. Maybe they won't make it downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we definitely want to, as always, uh, thank Johnny for taking the time in his busy schedule, as always, to spend time with us, to enlighten us, to entertain us, to en enrich the moment, and also to bring us great products to the market that we're very honored to to have on all of our platforms. So thanks again, Johnny, for doing this. And My he's, pleasure. He's the like a resident DJ at a hot club. He is the resident <laughs> mixologist <laughs> for this hot platform. Excellent. <laughs> and for our folks that are with us, uh, you know, uh, remember this, uh, this uh, handsome face because he will be joining us uh, soon uh, on some of our other upcoming, upcoming webinars. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. You know, and remember Johnny as well. Don't just talk about me. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, uh, for those of you that don't know, you know, we have our Greek wine club app to download on the Apple and Google store, uh, as well as, uh, our Greek is on app. We just launched that as well. So we have Greek products and, uh, which is food, wine, spirits, books, uh, merchandise, you name it. So look out for that as well. Yep. And again, um, we are going to feature these recipes on the podcast and video page. Uh, Stray Dog is available on our platforms, all of them. And Johnny, you're awesome, man. We appreciate everything you do. Thank you. My so pleasure. Much. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks for having us. Everyone at home watching, thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully I'll be seeing you all soon in like a real bar. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that, that's the next phase, man. We, we're going to start promoting these trips so we could do this live. It's going to be awesome. Wow, that actually is fun. I can't wait to do this live. We right? can have a whole, like, we'll sell tickets and get everyone to come into the... Yeah, man. Absolutely. That's that's the goal. And we're going to do well, can it. Can we do, like, a world Can we do like a world tour? Like, like, a bus and stuff and do these things? And we'll stop yeah. in, like, city to city? You know what? Uh, we... we uh, Very quick story. We we spoke to somebody who has a, a, a production company that does, like, these travel documentaries. I'm pitching this right now. Yeah, just do it. We're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Johnny, again. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, thanks, everybody out there for watching, for listening. This will be uh, the video and the podcast. The recipes will be listed. Johnny's links will be listed. Thank you, Foti. Thank you. Thanks, me. And again, Johnny Livanos, you're awesome, man. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>